Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. The flavors are so intense you become wrapped up in them. Unable to resist, you reach towards the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer. Closer. Until your fingertips connect with the end of everything. You are forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no Bailey now. Only Zool. And the herbs and spices. Though Miriam tries to revive you, she cannot. For you are already dead. Game over! What?! Okay, well, I mean, I expected that to kill me, but, like, like, like not for real. <laughs> wait, wait, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. So wait, what happens if I pick the other option? Do I not die? <laughs> what the hell? Why do we keep picking the option that kills me? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I want this to be over with as soon as possible, but, like, not in that sort of way. Apparently, the chicken was so good, I fucking died. Hi. Uh, I'm Bailey, and I, uh, basically explain stuff. Yeah. Big elbow drop! Talk about that incredible athleticism, look at this! Oh, and there's a super kick! Oh! Go faster, damn it! I want to be done with this shit. I don't care about the chicken. We already went through this. We already went over it. Blah 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 blah. Bad insult. Blah 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 blah. She's in love. Blah 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 blah. Chicken, 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 chicken. I guess I'll savor the moment. I don't know. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. <laughs> what a guy! What a mass murderer of chicken kind to make this piece of shit. What am I doing? Along with the flavors, you begin to feel something that can only be described as love for a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? Are we sure that I'm the right target audience for this game? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Yeah, good luck with that. You approach Colonel Sanders. It's my only option, so let's just go with it and get this over with. Colonel Sanders looks you up and down as you approach. It's impossible to read his mood, but you press on anyway. Colonel, I was wondering if I could, uh, talk to you for a second about all this bullshit that's going on. Colonel Sanders sits silently. You suppose he didn't say no, so you press forward. What exactly is going on with that chicken? Why are you making me like it, you sick bastard? Tell me, what are your secrets? I know you put something in your food. I know one of the spices and herbs are MSG. Squawk, you bastard, squawk! Well now, boy, no need to get upset, but I appreciate you for being bold and asking. It's an idea that where I- Where did he- Where did this come from? It's an idea that I have for a new combination of flavors that'll make me a fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. Oh yeah, sure. No, I can believe that. I can believe that KFC is rewriting history because that's exactly what's going on here. You know what? You know what? I figured this game out. Remember how I said that this is a great marketing ploy? Not only is it that, but it's also propaganda. Proper who what now? They want you to believe that this is what actually happened. They want you to think that this is the history of things. They want to hypnotize you into eating their chicken instead of Popeyes or Royal Farms or your local grocery store, which arguably has much better fried chicken than this piece of shit place. The only time I go to KFC is when Taco Bell is right next to it. That's the only reason. Well, hold on, boy. I thought you said you didn't like chicken. What? 
Look, it's just you and me talking here. I can keep a secret. If you're murdering all kinds of chickens, you know, I don't have to, like, do a whole press run about it. Because clearly, there's already so much propaganda about this surrounding you. In fact, I've got some of my own things that I'd be willing to exchange to you. Well, why the big time rush then, boy? The semester's only getting started. After all, we got two more whole videos to do of this. And we all know that the audience is loving this and eating it up just like my fried chicken. If this really is a market employee, boy, then boy, you really screwed yourself over, boy. He's clearly not going to give up easily. But, doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Learning about how you process your chickens and fucking murder them? Wouldn't that be fun? We're having so much fun here! la dee da dee da la la land you bitch! You got mocks, boy, I'll give you that. You wanna be the next chicken to get grinded up, bitch? Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leads in. You could feel his warm breath as he whispers. His warm, crusty, greasy-ass breath. It smells so bad. I- <laughs> Alright, boy, just one ingredient. But you can't tell nobody about this. I use penis. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. That's right, the whole cock and balls. I warned you. Honestly, you could fill in this space with anything and it would just make as much sense. Wow! You never have to guess that. In fact, you're not even sure where you get some if you'd search. Whatever this mysterious ingredient is. I don't know, Max is adding it in post. I have no idea what it says. Oh, you want the real secret ingredient? Okay, fine. Here it is. I'm actually gonna warn you this time. You might not like it. What the hell was that? While you're wrapped up in the huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. He just, like, apparated. Don't worry about it. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him, but you can't, because he apparated. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Why is my character so persistent on following this guy? This is... I don't like this. I... When is the day end? Oh, it's you again. Howdy, folks. Hi. You know, sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I graduate. Okay. But you know this is a really big rewriting of Colonel Sanders' history, right? The hell did you say, boy? It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world with all kinds of crazy ad campaigns. And you can bet on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but your legacy will be forever tarnished by what goes on behind the counter, because believe me, some disgusting stuff happens back- <coughs> Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Nag him to show your own strength, wow him with a big idea, to add an additional ingredient to really spice up things, be modest but thoughtful. I'm just very upset none of these options are run away and never talk to this crazy asshole again. I'll be modest but thoughtful, I guess. I don't know. What? Where did these hearts come from? Excuse me? What's Harry doing? Angst. 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 angst uh, angst, don't worry angst, about it. It's angst, fine. Angst. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. No, I didn't! 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 Those are lies! Lies, 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 lies from the tablecloth! I do not believe that! No! No! I do not! Angst! 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 Now you've got his attention. Oh, great! I'm making an ass of myself! As if I didn't before in, like... I don't know how many videos it's been, over a hundred? The flavors were complex, but comforting. 
the interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I guess. Well now, I do appreciate the compliment, Bailey. That's really nice. How do you know my name, you sick son of a bitch? I know everything. I'm sure you'll be a big success. Yeah, big, big success before you even know it. Well, you know what? I know we only met today, but I'm starting to feel the same way about you, boy. Colonel Harlan Sanders, the real one, not this fake one, is rolling in his fucking grave right now. Thank you, KFC. Thank you for this. This is great. You know what? I'm getting real sick of your negativity, boy. Maybe we should take this inside with the next lesson. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place! It's magnificent! Finally, we get to show off our stuff! Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show off our stuff! What if I totally blow it? That I could take this knife and stab you and everyone else in here? I mean, that's just a thought. But, uh, you're not gonna blow anything. Except maybe kisses to win the crowds of fans you're gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. I mean, it's better than whatever the fuck Harlan's doing over there. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena! Oh my god, it's Professor Dog! Excuse Yay! me! Yay! Bailey! Okay, now I'm in a better mood now. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off! Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but is unable to control yourself. Wait. Oh, hold on, let me... <laughs> let me process this. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Oh, no. No. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is? Me and you? That wasn't clear. I am so dead inside. Remember that feeling that I had when I played through Creature from the Krusty Krab? This is the exact same feeling that I have right now, except multiplied times ten. I... I don't even want to pop the question. I just don't want to. I don't want any of this anymore. I... I've been at this for an hour now. Can this please be over? That's alright, you don't have to ask. I'll just, uh, prepare our station here. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner! Beep boop zzz. Thank you, Clank. Very cool. Hmm. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Clank, obviously! Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam would be partnering with Clank today. Clank, keep yourself contained there, buddy. What is that face? It's okay. I already ate. I hate all the characters in this. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this junction. Juncture. Whatever. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Riveting stuff from Clank. Get it? Riveting? Because he has rivets? <laughs> Sayonara, bitches! Ow! Ow, that was a bad idea to shoot myself in the head with an ow! <laughs> Why did you... Why did you do that? Why did you fucking do that, Bailey? Are you trying to make us look bad? Are you trying to make me look bad? Do I look that bad to you? Huh? I'm not the one who told him to shoot himself with a nerf gun. That was his own damn fault. You know, days like this where I am thankful that we do not have a Twitter account. <laughs> I'm so thankful. Because we are going down so hard for this. <laughs> uh, but no, that's not. That wasn't funny. That's not funny. <laughs>
technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Am I supposed to care? Tissue? I hardly know you! Ah ha 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 ha! Ah ha 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 ha! I am in so much pain because I shot myself in the ear with a rival gun! Ow! Well, that's what you get for being dumb! Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of- Ugh. I got nothing against robosexual partnerships or anything, but this is just... You know what, moving on. Looks like the two of you will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking class work. <gasps> the dog's back! Yay! He's come to make sure that everything is okay. He's like, hey buddy, it's gonna be alright. You're gonna get through this day, I promise you. You don't have to shoot yourself with the rival blaster again. Yeah, because that was really stupid. Why did you fucking do that? Anyway, for today's lesson, we're gonna keep it simple. Pick a basic dish, divide it up into steps. Remember, no chef is an island. It takes two to make flints. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus would blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Hey, actually, no, that's a good idea. Uh, th 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 Colonel, stop! No! 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 I'm not like that, dog! I don't play on that team! No! No! Oh, wow. Even when she turns evil, she's still beautiful. Snap out of it, Bailey! Can't sim forever! Yes, I can! Yes, I can! Yes, I can! I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting, and nothing makes me feel better than eating some mashed potatoes and gravy. Good, good stuff right there. Mmm. Better than your chicken, you murderer! You are the devil incarnate! Perhaps we could also make some potato salad. I couldn't imagine one without the other, quite honestly. Hey, you know what? We might get along after all. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you turn quickly away. Ugh, I hate the sexual tensions in this. I'll go get the potatoes! We'll make some potato salad! Yeah! That'll make me feel better. No, please. Let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <laughs> is that what you call your victims, you sick bastard? Is that what you call them? I call them my family! You bitch! Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Ooh! No. You're delusional. We're just cooking partners, now mind your goddamn business! Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off of my man! <laughs> okay, you can have him! I don't care! You can totally have him! I'm not into him like that at all! Did someone call for me? No, no one called for you, you... Why did it just change to rock music? Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While well, I'm over here crushing Bailey's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember, Van Van? Remember? You got friend zoned, bitch! I bet it hurts! Ha ha! Cardinal Santos returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. That was quick. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old quote unquote friends. Well, howdy there, folks. Ashley, Van Van. We working in a quartet instead of a duet now? What's going on? Actually, no. It looks like Bailey was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs, they need a lot of mentoring. <laughs> I'm Ashley. I think I'm so cool. <laughs> I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Though I doubt it. Wait a minute, I just realized something. If it weren't for the jacket, he'd be shirtless. This is- this is skin! This- this is not safe at all to wear! How are you even allowed to be at this school? Let alone her, who's showing like part of her cleavage! Don't be rude, Van Van. 
Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Santa's ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Whose side are you on? But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any insults for you. I just want you to die. <sighs> I don't even care about what you're saying. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. That's fine! She can have her! I don't care! This tension is for nothing! This is pointless! Can we please move on? I just want to make the goddamn mashed potatoes! Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sander, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. I don't know, I basically said, Miriam, here, go work with a fucking robot instead. But I also don't want to turn to this suave at- You know what? Sure, whatever. I'm here to learn and to express myself in cuisine. Not bicker with a prima donna. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? I choose Colonel Sanders. And Colonel Sanders chose me. And we are partners in this cooking thing. We are not partners in love. Get your head out of the fucking gutter, Jordan. Isn't that right? Well, sometimes conflict can actually build character. Yeah, see? He's got a good point. I wouldn't want you to shy away from a bit of healthy competition with our folks, Bailey. Wow. Is he just not that into you? You think a gentleman would defend you in a situation like this? Did you do something to offend him at some point? I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. In this past hour or so, I'm sure I have. I've delivered so much heat to you, dude. I don't know what I was thinking, thinking you'd be on my side. That's what I was just saying! Nothing changed! This scene was pointless! You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps and you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. In fact, it was so much elsewhere that I forgot how to read that sentence correctly. Don't you worry there, city boy. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. See, I told you, this was written by Ernest Hemingway. What did I tell you? Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Give me the goddamn spork! I want the mashed potatoes, not you! Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. Dude! Like, let go of the spork! Give it to me! I'm not gay like you are! I promise! If you love something, set it free. Don't you try and flirt with me, you bitch! I know what you did to those chickens! Who are these people? I don't think so! Movie! Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork full up when you see Ashley with a sinister look. You know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. That's fine. I've been saying that you could have him. I don't love him in that way. I don't even like him. I only wanted the mashed potatoes. He's the one that's making this more complicated than it has to be. And then filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sport full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid goddamn face. <laughs> Van Van, do something, do something. Scooping up a finger full, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious! Horrified by his revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? The answer is fuck no! Hold it right there, Bailey McChicken! We do not waste food in the boom cooking arena! Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you! If you throw one more goddamn spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it! For we'll never relax! 
Can I have potatoes face? No! Van Van rushes back over. A covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Placed on a battle axe blade. Forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> what? You ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I will have the first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off at the plate. I wouldn't be surprised if this student is the most important, like, thing in the story. There's gonna be, like, a plot twist at the end where he's, like, this super cool dude. Just you wait. If I ever get back to this. No! Don't do it! No, no, don't do it! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed. It may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic! Too late. It has been eaten. Wee -wee -wee -wee. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good, Mr. Professor. He killed him! And turned him into a, a sheet ghost! <laughs> what is this? What is going on? Everyone stand back! Don't take another fucking bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment. Then it is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Oh man, I was really hoping that'd kill him. Tastes like poison. The entire class has got to watch Pop's final moments. Shock is frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obviously being dangerous and killing someone, has inoculated him against poisons of all kind. Wh how is that possible? You know, days like this where I think the professors... You know, we don't make enough money here. Uh, considering you're a dog? You deserve all the money in the world! Oh, you're so cute! I would give you my own money if I could, but I'm broke, unfortunately. <gasps> Can I pay you in belly rubs? Please, please, no. please! Let me pay no. you in belly no. rubs, please! Get the fuck away from me! No! Get away! Get away! Uh, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, like having a dying wish or some crap. Colonel Sanders approaches you. Hey folks, I'm sorry you had to go through all that. Please, let me walk you home. I'll walk myself home! If you walk me home, guess what's gonna happen? Just being stabbed over and over again, and then he turns me into fried chicken the next morning. Fuck no! You stay the fuck away from me! I will get a restraining order and a lawyer! Not in that order, but you get what I mean! What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark, and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Howdy, folks. Those, uh, mashed potatoes you made today in class, uh... Before you go on, I want you to know... They're not a great representation of my skills. In fact, you should see my potato salad. It is a lot better, trust me. You know what? I didn't even realize I was making them. I thought there'd be a minigame of some sort, but... Then again... This is a novelization game, so... Did I really expect any minigame like that to go on? No, but that would have been nice. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, your taters, they were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Really? Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Yeah, considering I consider cooking to be a very essential skill. Fellas, here's what you gotta do to impress anyone, man or woman. You gotta know how to cook. Because if you know how to cook, you know a way to 
a significant other's heart. Very easily. Trust me. Nothing satisfies the heart more than a full stomach full of something warm and wonderful. That being food, you perverts, not anything that you're thinking of! Frickin' perverts. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for- No. 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 Colonel Sanders? Yes, Bailey? There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there! Oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Thank you so much, Jesus, thank you. Uh, I don't thank you enough, but thank you! Thank you. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights, emotional weights, baggage weights, physical weights, my girlfriend's weight, my girlfriend's emotional weights. You get what I mean, there's so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no! I... You... Shut up! I'm the one that's supposed to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story! In fact, I'm so much the star of this story, my star hair has decided to, like, spike up like I'm, um... A what's-his-name from Scott Pilgrim. You know, the, the vegan one. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Yes, I can! His ghost is right there! Hmm. I reckon I also saw you kill that guy. What was his fucking name? Uh... I think his name was Linguini, and he's from Ratatouille. And if this means he died before he got out of college, and before he, like, moved to France, before the events of that movie... Oh, no! We stopped Ratatouille from happening! No! Oh, no! Oh! That is the worst part! Forget him! We're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I am the hero! I am the good guy here! Do you understand? I am the good guy! I'm the one that's doing the good things here! Shout out the Hedgehog! I, I mean, Colonel Sanders! The Spork Monster?! What the fuck?! What? Where did he come from? The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. <laughs> what? What the? F what the? F I shouldn't have been shit talking about Sporks apparently, because what the fuck is this? I uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. We will not let harm come to another student, except that ghost kid. I kind of dropped the ball on that one. That wasn't even your fault. What are you talking about? But I know who you did murder, and the audience knows at this point because I've repeated it so many times, you motherfucker! Be afraid! Be very afraid of me! Because I'm a monster, you see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? At this point, I don't even know or care. But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn based fight sequence! I'm- what? What will you do? <laughs> what? <laughs> why is this? What, what, what- why is this? I, I- I guess I'll attack, I don't know. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Uh, cook with love is my only attack, apparently. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real, bitches! That attack really upset the Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. Okay, you take one damage. Uh, attack again. It worked last time, right? So it's gotta work this time. Quick with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster is feeling really threatened by your attack. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. 
How will you respond? D defend! I'm gonna defend! Uh... Trepidation? You hold your head between your hands and mother. This is not happening. This is not happening, man! This is not happening at all! I'm going crazy! Crazy! Crazier by the minute from this game! As if anything else has made me go this crazy before! Like that goddamn bunny rabbit! That Mr. Funny Funny Bunny Face! <laughs> <laughs> this is not happening, dude. This is not happening. Spark Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spark Monster uses Utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not gonna survive the battle. I guess we're attacking again, I don't know. Spark Monster is oozing with cheese sauce onto the lot of the quad. I wonder who's gonna have to clean up that mess, because I sure am not. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded Edge! Val Villain, your reign of terror stops here! Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. What? So you did murder those chickens to harvest their energy to defeat this thing! Hot Pop Power Pinch! Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. In 13 hits, apparently. You... Saved me. You saved me? An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Uh, forget Mercy, finish him, spare this wretched beast. No! We're going the Mortal Kombat way. We're finishing this bitch. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. You'll never survive my student death loan destruction. Spork monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. Well, who we, chicken boy? You continue to surprise me. The defeated monster left behind a special item. Ooh, what is it? It appears first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. Emblazoned on the cover of this red book, you see a six-fingered hand with the number three in the middle. Could this be the path to saving Gravity Falls, you wonder? Only time will tell. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Okay, well I was close, you gotta give me credit for that. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last man to have his name signed out is Borco. Borco? <laughs> who the fuck is Borco? Wait, was that the student who died? Is that his name? Borco, Borco, Borco. I love that name. I wish I had that name. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Did he carry me home? How did he know where I lived? You fucking stalker! How did you know? How? Did. You. Know. How. Oh, I know lots of things. Lots of things. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. What a fucking guy. What a, what a guy. What a game. What a... What an experience I'm having right now. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled over you as you were tucked in tight. Good night. You bitch. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird like that, yo, just like this entire game. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what they say in the early days of Nostalgia Critic. 
It's a big lipped alligator moment. You wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you have. Oh, this is day two. Okay. So that means that means we're good then. Okay. Well, I don't know what the fuck that was. This game is really weird. Compared to the last novelization game I played, which was last year, this this one definitely takes the cake. I think this one is a lot more weird than Mr. Masaji. But there is no massages here. There is no comfort here. This is just weird. I can see why there are some people, you know, women and gay guys who love KFC or crazy masochists who like to torture themselves would enjoy this game. But quite frankly, as I said before, I do not. I am not in the target audience for this game. Again, I'm playing this because I lost a bet with Max, and I'm very upset about that. But, at the same time, this game is actually pretty hilarious. And I believe it's still free on Steam if you want to play it. So, there you go. Anyway, that was basically I Love You Colonel Sanders. Thanks for watching, I guess. I will see you all in the next video. Or hopefully it won't be as weird as this one. Later.